Un point. Oh, hello friends, I'm back at it again with the white tanks. Today, I've got this old neglected Tamiya Panther, and it's missing a few pieces, and it's been sitting on a shelf for a few years accumulating dust. And since winter will be with us very soon, I'm taking inspiration from everybody's favourite season, and I'll breathe a bit of new life into this tank, with a worn out winter camo style, and a bit of weathering. So, let's get to it. Before I start painting, there's a couple of things I have to do first. I need to take this other track off as it will make cleaning and painting a lot easier and I'm hoping I get it off without breaking another wheel or the track itself. And there we go! Great success! Next, I introduce our panther to Monsieur Henri and then give it a good scrubbing with some warm and soapy water to get rid of all this dust and grime. This is to ensure our paint will actually stick to the model. Once this baby is dried off, I take her outside and give her a nice priming of grey. And it's looking a lot better already actually with just this primer on. I want a nice strong grey for the undercoat, which will show beneath the chipping we plan to do. So I paint this uniform grey onto the already grey tank. Am I wasting my time by painting grey on grey? Yeah, probably. But I'm not sure if the primer would hold up as well as I'd like, so we carry on anyway. And once that's done, I stick this drive wheel back in place temporarily with some blue tack ready for our next step. For the chipping effect I'll be doing in a moment, I need to first add a layer of varnish, which will act as a barrier to prevent rubbing off the grey undercoat also. It's super dark outside, so I didn't end up filming this step. Instead, I've produced an astoundingly realistic reconstruction of the event. Nice. And before I go any further, it's probably good to reattach this wheel, as this will save me some farting about down the line. I first have to pull out the blue tack I'm now regretting shoving in there, and then drill out this piece from the drive wheel using a pin vise. I take a bit of leftover sprue from the night haunts we painted in our previous video and chop a bit off. The first piece is sent into orbit, but I get the second one under control and trim it down with my hobby knife. Probably do it a little bit better at home, this looks a bit unsafe now I'm watching it. Anyway, it doesn't need to be perfect, just roughly the size of these two holes. I'll use some super glue here to secure it in place. Also, I'd been experimenting off camera with adding some battle damage to the little guy, and I think this is going to help a lot to get that battered look we're going for. I should have definitely thought about this before I primed and painted it, but hey, that's all part of the process, isn't it? I use a variety of techniques to add battle damage, using a small pin vise to add some spots that might have been raked by a heavy machine gun, a larger pin vise to simulate some larger ordnance, and a hobby knife to add some other random scrapes and glancing shots. I also use my hobby knife to feather the edges of each little shot and scrape I add, so it doesn't look like someone's just stuck a pin vise into the side of my tank. I'll add some little scratch marks and further bits later on too, using a brush and some paint. But for now, our panther has been suitably pulverised, so on we go. To blend these battle scars in with the rest of our work, I add in a few little drops of brush on primer. And then once that's dry, I touch it up with some uniform grey. With that, all of our prep is now done and we are ready to start the fun stuff. Woo! So, as mentioned earlier, I want to try out some paint chipping for this model to give it that heavily weathered look. And I've never done this before, but I've just watched a few videos on YouTube quickly, so I'm now a certified expert in this technique. My first step is to cover the panther in hairspray, as this will allow me to rub off the sections of white paint I'll be adding in the next phase. So I give it a pretty good blasting of this stuff, making sure to hit every little bit I plan to chip off later. And I'll use the rest of this hairspray to give myself a massive cone head, so that won't be going to waste. When the hairspray is dried completely, I get out some Corax white, I think this is the perfect white for this panther, as Corax white is quite a matte and chalky white with grey undertones, perfect for winter camouflage. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I like my paint to be liquid. This Corax white, however, seems to have other ideas, and it's decided to turn into a literal paintball. But since I have no plan B, and I can't be bothered to wait for a new one to arrive, I instead try to revive it by adding in some Lamian medium and pulverizing this new alien life form into a thick, 
goo. And after a ferocious mixing, I end up with something that mm, resembles paint and I start slapping this on. I apply the paint-like substance all over our little winter panther, not worrying about being too precise as I'll be chipping off loads anyway. I'll give it two coatings to build up some reasonably even coverage, then leave that to dry off completely. With our Corax white now dry, we're ready for the bit I've been looking forward to, chipping away some of this paint. For this, I take some water and an old brush and I apply a fair amount to the areas I want to chip off. I let that soak in for a moment and then start working some of that paint off by scrubbing my brush against it. Some areas I chip off a lot of paint, other areas not so much. I try to think about which areas might get the most wear and tear from the crew climbing in and out of hatches, the weather battering it, getting scratched up in combat, and I try to focus my attention on these areas mainly. And we do end up with quite a cool effect actually. The paint is chipped off in a way that looks pretty realistic and I'm really pleased with it. I'll definitely be using this technique more in the future. So that's another feather in me cap. I then come back with a little more Corax wipe to touch up any areas I took a bit too much paint off. And here she is, very battered up, like she's driven through a million burning fences, or squished a thousand sheds, or, or run over a billion pumpkins, or, 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 I don't know, but she's battered up, okay? And that's actually the biggest job of this model done. We've eaten our entree, now we are onto the desserts. So, before I continue with my other weathering stages, I'm going to quickly paint the rubber onto these wheels using some Abaddon Black. I'll quickly glue these wheels into place first, so I don't have to mess around painting them as they do the old spinner row. I tried that before and it was really annoying. A quick little lick of paint here, and another tickle there, and we are finished with the wheels. Now our panther is looking quite naked and exposed, so it's time to add the little tracks back on to keep them warm. I tried to do this without breaking them, and just about succeed. And for a more realistic look, I want to stick the tracks down to imply they're made of heavy metal links instead of flimsy little rubber things. I do a quick eyeball test, yep, that looks pretty good, and add a little drop of glue to the bottom of the tracks and the top of the wheels, then squish it down like an unwanted ant at a picnic. Now the tracks are on, she's looking pretty good actually, much more like a tank. For my next step, I'll add some Agrax Surf Shade around the tank as a bit of grime and shadow. I apply this quite selectively around any hard edges or any other areas where dirt might accumulate. I also plop some into the little bullet holes and other bits of battle damage we've added to start building up a rusty look. Usually I'd be slapping this stuff all over a model like there's no tomorrow, but I use it very sparingly with this tank. I don't want to overdo it and ruin that nice faded white we've got going. Now I whip out my homemade Sterling mud type mixture again, and I'm applying a metric ton of this to my wheels and tracks. I played around a bit with this, and through my experimentation, I found the best way to have the wheels looking muddy, but still realistic like they've been turning constantly, is to slop this on all over the tracks and wheels, and then come back with a bit of tissue to wipe away the excess mud, and reveal the wheels in their like little shining pearls in the mouth of a mud clam. What? Absolutely mental, look at that. Right, buckle in students, I've got my lab coat on and I'm doing some very advanced chemistry here, so concentrate. I've made a grimy little mixture using some dried bark, corn red, a little drop of Abaddon black and some strong tone. By mixing the brown with the other colors, we have made another shade of brown, amazing. I'll be using this colour to add a further bit of rusty wear and tear to our panther using more revolutionary painting techniques. I take a piece of sponge I've cut up, dip it in my mixture, then wipe out most of the excess paint. I apply this very carefully around the tank, focusing on any edges or places where the paint has already been chipped away. The key here is to be very delicate, as if you're heavy handed with this stuff, you could end up with some nasty looking smudges of brown all over the lovely work we've already done. The trick I use, and I hope you'll borrow this too when you weather up your own panthers, is to imagine I'm trying to stroke a delicate little quail. I just brush up against it ever so gently, and it's like I was never even there, like a fart in the wind. And once that coat is dry, I come back in with a little gunmetal metallic and do the same thing, but even more sparingly with this coat. 
I barely want to see it. I just want a tiny little hint of metallic on some areas. And again, you're with the quail. You're using all your concentration to stroke its precious little head so delicately. I then use a brush to add some little streaks and scratches with my same super fancy custom blend brown super paint I whipped up in the lab earlier. I add some little grimy streaks out of the bullet holes and some scratch marks dotted around the tank. Some I add as straight streaks, others I add as weird little shapes that might have been chipped out of the surface of the paint. Again, I'm applying these quite sparingly. I want this to look battered up but not like it's been dragged out of a pond of rust. Since we're dealing with a Tamiya Panther, I've got these Tamiya weathering powders and I haven't used these before but I wanted to give them a go for this project. I'm not sure how they'll turn out so I'll apply them very lightly and go with the less is more approach for now. I start by focusing my attention to the rear, much like real life, <laughs> and add in some soot weathering around these vents and exhaust. I also apply some of this soot colour around the end of the gun and a bit around the knocked out machine gun port here back of the tank gets a final sooty rub down and we're ready to move on. Next I come back in using the rust powder this time and apply a small amount to the sooty portions I just added. I also tickle this on around other parts of the tank, especially around the bottom edges of the armour plates and those areas where I've chipped away some of the Corax white already. And I then apply some to the wheels here to add a bit more colour diversity, just to mix it up a bit you know, I think it works. And finally, I whack a bit of the snow powder all over the tank. I'm not sure if this is even going to add any noticeable effect, to be honest, since the majority of the paint is already white-ish, but we give it a go. I'm enjoying all these powdery little explosions too much to stop anyway. As one last touch for this model, I dry brush some Steel Legion Drab onto the tracks and wheels to add a little definition to the mud. And you can see that the mud's coming to life with each little flick of my brush. Ugh, magical, isn't it? Love it. And with that, our tank is finished. So let's get her under the spotlight. Here she is guys and girls, the winter panther in her natural habitat on top of a black spinny photo thing. I think we've done pretty well with this, it came to us in quite a sorry state, it was unloved, neglected and really dusty, much like myself actually. But now here stands a well weathered hulking mechanical feline. The paint chipping was really fun to do and has given us a nice result for not a great deal of effort which I'm really pleased about. I'll definitely be playing around with this technique in the future and seeing what else we can do with it. I'd like to try this with the paint being chipped off a metallic undercoat, but that's something for another day. Another thing I was really pleased about was the mud on the wheels and tracks. I love how caked on this looked, and I think it actually looks fairly realistic, especially when, again, this didn't take much time or effort to do. I'd say we achieved our goal with this model. Although she's not perfect, as none of my creations ever are, she looks good and it's quite close to what I had envisioned when starting it. It was really fun to paint something in a heavily weathered, beaten up style, as I don't often do this. Most projects I'm trying to make things look all clean and smooth and nice, so this was a really nice change of pace. Anyway, tonight Matthew, I will be a rat from a swamp. Thank you for watching, see you soon.